Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, is King David, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endureth the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We just read Psalms 45, 6, Psalms 47, 8, Acts 2, 30, and Hebrews 12, 2. Hello, brothers, this is Christ. Uh, hopefully you're having a great morning and uh, you've had a good week. I'm sorry it's been a little bit longer than a week before a study came out. I had some t trouble with this study. Uh, the Lord's been putting it on my heart to use words that are encouraging. And I, first time I did this study, I said some jabbing words to, uh, about brethren. I didn't use their name, but I said some jabbing words, and the Lord really convicted me. We're going through Proverbs, and it talks about having good words and having a good heart with those words, a good intention, okay? I want to exhort the brethren. I love my brothers to Christ, even the ones that have fallen away. I love my brothers to Christ, even the ones that have stabbed me in the back. I love them, and if I want to see them get back on the right path, I have to use good words and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, not getting all like jabs, sarcastic, and, and doing jabs, and backbiting, and whispering, and railing for railing, and, and getting into all the drama and everything. I always told brethren that if you see a brother in Christ, or a wolf in sheep's clothing, a false convert that's do, teaching wrong, do a Bible study. There's nothing wrong with doing a Bible study and using that person as a bad example. But if you make the whole video about that person, you're now a gossip column. You're just like one of those gossip magazines. You're just about backbiting and whispering and railing for railing. That's all you're about. Turn it into a Bible study. Okay? And that's what we're going to do here. Who is sitting on the throne and who is on the cross? And as we get into this, who's sitting on the throne? One thing I like to read, why do people not want Jesus Christ sitting on the throne? Revelation 4, 5. And out of the throne proceedeth lightnings and thunderings, and voices, and there are seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. It's a fearful thing to have God on the throne, and He is on the throne in heaven. He's got a throne in heaven. We read about that down in these verses. We read that He's got a throne down here in Jerusalem. But today we're going to talk about the throne of the heart. Okay, the throne of the heart. Okay. But it's a fearful thing to have Jesus Christ on the throne. It is. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to be wise? You start, start by fearing God. It doesn't, it just doesn't start with fearing God. It starts with fearing God and it ends with fearing God. This is all what's in between, brothers, says Christ. Seeking wisdom, God's wisdom, not the world's wisdom. Seeking knowledge, God's knowledge, not man's knowledge. Okay. But it starts with the fear of the Lord. Okay. Now this study is for saved sinners, not the lost. Okay, If you come here and you're lost, I, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to preach the gospel real quick to teach you how to get saved. But this study is for saved sinners. Why? Because we're going to be talking about the, the everyone has a throne in their heart, saved and lost. But only saved also have a cross. You have to go to Calvary to get that cross. And now you have a throne and you have a cross. Who's on the throne? Who's on the cross? That's what we're going to be talking about. So, this, this study is for saved sinners. You say, well, I, I'm saved, I'm saved. Let's see if you're saved. Okay. Let's see if your salvation lines up. Did you follow the true plan of salvation? Or did you get deceived with the false gospel? Remember Paul talked about people receiving another gospel? Receiving another Jesus? receiving another spirit, which Paul hadn't received. So they're not, they're not following the real Jesus of the King James Bible. They're not following the true plan of salvation that Paul gives us in the, gospel, in the King James Bible. And they're receiving another spirit. Now, two spirits we'll be talking about a little bit is you have the Antichrist spirit that's even in the world today, but you also have that Jezebel spirit that's in the world today. Right? What spirit did you receive? Okay. 
who's on the throne and who's on the cross. You have to be saved in order to have the cross. You have to be saved. So how does one get saved today? Well, the first step is repentance. And repentance is not going from unbelief to belief. Repentance isn't a change of mind. That's wrong. Repentance is a change of heart. God, when God repents, change of mind. When man repents, it's a change of heart. Right? Repentance isn't a work. Don't let people fool you into that. What is repentance? How will we let the Bible define the Bible? Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Change of heart. Everyone knows they're sinners. People are trying to work their own way to heaven. Everyone knows that they're sinners. Everyone I've ever come across that's lost, that doesn't have a profession of faith, like a false profession, versus a true profession, I've come across a lot of lost people. They know they're sinners, but some of them believe they're not, they're not that bad. One sin makes you worthy of hell. Depart from me, a curse, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. It takes one sin to send you to hell. That's it. Just one sin. You don't have to be like the most wicked sinner on this earth to go to hell. It just takes one sin. You sin against God, almighty, righteous God that's going to judge you one day. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such that be of a contrite spirit. You have to come to God broken. Having sorrow for that sin. Well, where did you get that from? Corinthians, for, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. You have to come to God with a broken, contrite spirit, having sorrow in your heart for sinning against Him. That's the change of heart. Before you got saved, you loved your sin. Your life was a mess. Everything's falling apart. The Bible says, if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. The wages of sin is death. You're earning wages for hell and the lake of fire. Just simply living after the flesh, even for saved sinners, if you get into living after the flesh, the wages of, uh, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Sin is negative. Right? But the change of heart is you go from loving your sin, not having a problem with your sin, wanting your sin, to now you hate sin. You've seen what it's doing to your life. It's sending you to hell. I hate this sin. I don't want anything to do with this sin. Lord, I'm even sorry I've ever sinned against you. I wish I'd never sinned against you. That's true sorrow. This is the first step. Did you come, come, go across the first step? Or did you skip it? Because someone talked you out of it. Oh no, I don't have to repent. I don't have to repent. No, no, I don't have to repent. It's works. That's works-based salvation. That's works-based. You'll never get saved, brothers the sisters of Christ, that you know that one cannot get saved if they skip this. If you're watching this and you're lost and you've been told, oh, it's just unbelief to belief. So it's believe and believe. So we just dropped it off and just said only believe. You won't get, you're not saved. Oh, you know, repentance, you know, it's just, I admit I'm a sinner. The lost world does that. You won't get saved. You have to come to God broken and having sorrow in your heart for sinning against Him. That's the first step. Did you, Pat, did you go through this first step? If you didn't, this study's not for you. What's the next step? Okay, you know you're a sinner. You have sorrow for that sin. You're on your way to hell. You call out to God and say, I don't want to go to hell. Lord, I deserve to go to hell, but I don't want to go to hell. Lord, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Isaiah 53, 5, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Why did I read that? Because we're going to get into 1 Corinthians 15, 3, where it says how he died for our sins. How he died, and then he died for our sins. You can't skip repentance. It's still there. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. Everyone says, this is the gospel. There's no repentance here. How he died for our sins. For I delivered unto you, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died, how he died, and he died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. How he died? 
He was beaten. He was whipped. We're going to get into this a little bit more in part three of this study. This will probably be an intro, because this is going to be a long study. And I want to break it up and start doing smaller studies. Okay? But you, what do you do? What must I do to be saved? You have to go through, and someone has to show you either read it in the Bible, or someone verbally speaks to you what Jesus went through because of your sins. And you have to believe how he died. He was nailed to a cross. He bled out. All that blood that was bled out was God's blood. God the Father. Jesus is God the Father manifest in the flesh. Jesus is God fully and completely. It was God's blood that was shed on the cross. And it's only God's blood that can wash your sins away. How he died and rose again the third day. Acts 16.31, they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. See, they skip first. If you skip the first part, repentance, you'll never get saved. You'll never get that cross that we're going to be talking about here in part three. You'll never get saved. What's the next part after that? Okay, I believed. Repented and believed. I'm good, right? No, 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 no. This isn't hard. That's what makes that's what's frustrating, brother. For us, brothers and sisters, Christ trying to witness for Jesus Christ. If you're a lost person or a false convert, you have a profession of faith, but you never went through the true plan of salvation. What makes it so hard? This isn't hard. You guys are making it. The lost world is making it hard. You're making it harder than it is. Repent. Come to God broken. That sin ain't worth it. It ain't worth going to hell, but it's sending you to hell. It ain't worth preventing you from getting saved. Right? you got to come to God and throw the, your iniquities at the foot of the cross. I didn't say clean up your life. I said throw that iniquity at the foot of the cross. You say, Lord, I don't want this sin anymore. I can't save myself. I've tried cleaning up my life myself. I just fall flat on my face. I can't do it, Lord. And you throw that iniquity at the foot of the cross. The old man gets thrown at the foot of the cross. The old man is dead and buried with Jesus Christ. The new man is raised. You throw that old man that's sinful and wicked, and God gives you a new life and cleans up your life so you're not so sinful and wicked anymore. This push that it's okay, that you can be saved and still be so rotten to the core, that's foreign to the pages of Scripture. It's completely foreign. Paul talks about it. When you get saved, there will be a changed life. God will start cleaning up your life because your heart is for the Lord now. You've got that cross. The third step is confess. Romans, you got to confess your repentance and your belief to God in prayer. You're already talking to God. God, what must I do to be saved? I don't know how to save myself. Lord, how do I get saved? Romans 10, 18. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. It starts in the heart. It's always a heart issue. Which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved? That's future. Thou shalt be saved. This stuff has to come before God saves you. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Confession comes before God saves you. You repent. You believe, you confess both in prayer to God. Why do you confess? Why are, why are people against prayer today? You have a lot of people coming along and saying, oh, prayer is a work, prayer is a work. We also have easy prayerism. Well, you just say a prayer and you're in where it's like, did you repent and believe? Is that belief in the heart, not the head? You can have the knowledge of how Jesus died, why he died, but that belief will never come if you skip repentance. You just, you're just have head knowledge. You're just a fake and a fraud. You're a phony. I speak from experience. I was a fake and a fraud clear up until I was 35 years old. From 12 years old to 35 years old, I was a fake and I was a fraud because I got taught this easy believism. You can live however you want to live to a point unless, we, like, unless the Babel building you're going to says it's wrong. They don't go off this. They go off of man's wisdom and man's moral, morals. But I look like the world, act like the world, and I had no problem with sin. I love sin. I was a false convert. Until I got brought to the truth. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It talks about the heart man believeth unto righteousness. I've known great men of God that mock this. 
Well, did you believe in your head or did you believe in your heart? And they're mocking it. Why? Because most of their, con ha well, at least half of their congregation is uh, professing lost. Or not professing lost, right? They're professing Christians that are lost. And they don't want to upset them. Because they have it up here and it's not down here. They say you miss heaven by 13 inches. It's up here and it never makes it down here. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Why do they try to take that out, brother says Christ? Why do they take prayer out where you have to confess both in prayer? Why? For, because of the next verse, 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. These easy believism that take repentance out, and now they're taking prayer out, they're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are ashamed. They don't want anything to really do with the real plan of salvation. If you didn't go through this, you didn't get saved. You don't have that cross that we're going to be talking about. The last step, the last step, and this part is being attacked in these last days. This last step is so important. If you're watching, if you're still with me, call. Today they're trying to say repentance just means goes from unbelief to belief. So they can take it out and just say belief. Now they're saying call just means believe. So they're taking call out and just leaving belief. Only believe, only believe. All things are possible if you only believe. It's not in the Bible when it comes to salvation. Faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. It's not in the, God, in the Bible. So when you fall for those heretics, faith alone, faith alone. We got on to those heretics. And we told them, hey, chapter and verse where it says faith alone... The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10, because I'm going to read 10, because they, love, they hate 10. They hate verse 10. Okay? They hate it with a passion. Why? Because true biblical repentance is going to lead to the changed life that we're going to be talking about. They hate it. Okay? To Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are ye saved. It's God's grace that saves us. It's the only way to get saved is by God's grace. Period. How do you find God's grace? Through faith. You have to go through faith. But when you say grace alone, by faith alone, they're turning faith into works. It's, it comes becomes something you're doing to earn salvation. We're going to get into this a little bit more when we talk about the cross. Okay? You've earned salvation. No, you haven't. I still haven't earned salvation. To this day, I haven't earned salvation. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves... You don't turn faith into... Faith is something you do, not of yourselves. So when they say grace alone through faith alone, they're making about what they're doing. They're, they're, leaving, they're, they're downplaying God's grace. I didn't save myself. God saved me. He saved us, the Bible says. Jesus Christ, God the Father, manifest in the flesh. He saved us. Amen. Okay. God's grace is what saves us. How do you find God's grace today? Through faith. Through faith that when this book tells you God's word, whether it's the spoken word or the written word, but today we have the written word. When the written word tells you, you've got to go through all these steps, you have faith that this is truth, and you're going through all these steps. You're talking to a God you've never seen before. You're humbling yourself before God that you've never seen before, that you didn't believe in before, but now you do. It takes faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of yourselves, not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And a lot of them like to boast. Faith alone, faith alone, that's boasting. Because the Bible doesn't say it. They're boasting about how I did it. I saved myself. And when you call them out on it, then they'll try to downplay it. Oh, no, 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 it's grace, grace alone, by faith alone. No. And that's uh, verse 10 that they like to leave out. It says, for we, once you get saved, once you get saved, for we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works that have before been ordained, that we should walk in them. The changed life which they hate with a passion. Why do you think they take repentance out? And then they take prayer out. They want to be head belief, and they want the people to believe that you can have head belief and go to heaven. No, you can't. No, you can't. The Bible talks about people that have love. There are lovers of pleasures 
more than lovers of God. They have a head knowledge, they have a little bit of a love for God, but they love their sin and they love this world more than they love God. And they are not willing to come to God broken and throw all this to the side and come to God broken. I didn't say clean up your life. I said throw it to the side when it comes to the priority of your heart. Throw it to the side. It's sending me to hell and coming to God broken. They're not willing to do it. Some say, the Bible also says some have a form of godliness. Head knowledge. A form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Right. They're destroying the true plan of salvation because they don't want you to get saved. I'm trying to reach you for the truth if you're lost and watching this, or you're a false convert and you've been led in a false gospel. Only believe, only believe. You need to repent. You need to tr repent. And true repentance is having sorrow in your heart for sinning against God. It's a heart issue. Always will be. That belief needs to be in the heart. And the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You need to confess both in prayer to God. Prayer is not a work. They're trying to push out prayer as a work. Prayer. Uh, on the Sabbath day, nobody was allowed to talk on the Sabbath day in the Old Testament. Because if you talked, that's a work. So if you talked, you, you profane the Sabbath day. Didn't Jesus stand up and read from the Old Testament scriptures on the Sabbath day in the synagogue? Are you saying Jesus is a sinner? That's what I'd hit these people up that say prayer is a work, prayer is a work. Oh, so now Jesus is a sinner? They'd like Jesus to be a sinner because they don't want a perfect, righteous man to believe in. They want him to be just like him. Remember in the Old Testament when, they, when God was their king, the Jewish people, if you know the Bible, brothers and Christ? In the Old Testament, God was their king. Okay? God was their king, and what happened? They wanted a king like everyone else. They don't want a savior that's perfect and sinless. They want a savior that's just like everyone else. Part of me wonders if that's what the, they were looking for. They didn't want a guy that was holy, that knew the word of God, that was perfect, that had love and compassion for people. They didn't want that kind of king, which is why the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes rejected him. They were looking for someone like them. Someone that was like a Pharisee or a scribe and Sadducee. They were looking for someone that was like them. They weren't looking for Jesus Christ, the perfect man, the perfect Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. But is there a call. I don't want to get too off. Call. Oh, it just means that. It means believe. It means believe. No, it means ask. And I can prove it. We'll just do a quick run over. Genesis 4.26 Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, that just means believe. Just, just means believe. Psalms 116.4 Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. He's calling on the name of the Lord saying, Save me. Save my soul. No, no, it's just believe. Lamentations 3.55 I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of a low dungeon. I'm in a low dungeon. I called upon thy name. Save me, O Lord. I'm in this dungeon. Save me. 1 Corinthians 1.2 Unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that is in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call means ask. The final step, brothers, sisters, Christ, that we went through, and if you're watching this and you're lost, the final step is you've got to get on your knees, you confess both in prayer, and then after you've done true biblical repentance, Believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Confess both in prayer. You get on your knees and you say, Lord, I don't deserve it. Lord, please save me. I need you to save me because I can't save myself. I need to be saved. Lord, please save me. We don't see that happening that much these days. Why? Because prayer is being taken out of the plan of salvation that's found in the King James Bible. Repentance is taken out. Prayer is taken out. All that's left is head belief. Satan doesn't want you to get saved. 
his children where it says you're of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. He was a liar from the beginning and the father of it. His children don't want you to get saved. I want to see you get saved. If you're watching this and you're not saved, you never went through the true plan of salvation. I'm not doing this to be mean. I'm not trying to be confrontational. This is the true plan of salvation. I want to see you get saved. I want to see everyone get saved. Now, I know that's not going to happen, but I want to see everyone get saved. Brothers and Christ, that's supposed to be our attitude. Okay. Now, the reason, we talked about this, the reason they don't want call, or not call, but repentance, the reason they take out repentance is because they don't want the changed life. They want a free pass to heaven while continuing to live it up down here. Be it lust of the flesh, the Bible talks about, we'll be talking about it a little bit later, uh, the ways of the world, the wisdom of the world, pleasing the world, doing things, with, taking Satan up on his offer. What does Satan do? He offers you the lust of the flesh, he offers you the world, and in exchange you've got to believe his doctrines of devils. You've got to believe what he tells you. You've got to follow him. Not our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The changed life comes after true biblical salvation. It's guaranteed. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The changed life. It's guaranteed. Now people say, well, you mean I have to be perfectly sinless at the moment I get saved? No. It took me two years. Because I fought God. If you don't fight God, someone can have their life really cleaned up and living for the Lord and doing what's right probably within six months, probably even sooner than that. Why does it take longer? Because we, as Bible-believing, God-fearing men, when we get saved and we're babes in Christ, we fight God. We give in to the flesh. We give in to the world. And we fight God. That's why it takes so long. Why did it take me two years? Probably a little bit longer than two years. Why is it for two years it got cleaned up, and then for the next two years I would choose to get back into games and get out, get back into games? I've been saved ten years, brother says Christ. It, where I'm at now, I didn't get here like that. It's called walking with God. It's called fearing God. It's called going through experiences, chastisement of God. He chastised me, got me back on the right path. I was miserable. After I got saved, any time I went back to things that I gave up for the Lord, when I went back into them, I was miserable. I wasn't that way before I got saved. There's evidence of salvation. There's evidence of a changed life. My heart towards sin changed. My attitude towards sin. My heart towards sin. My heart toward God changed. I want to please God. If this didn't please God, I tried to throw things out. I still backpedaled. Sometimes I tried to resurrect the old man. But there's still a changed life. When I first got saved, my life changed. How I started looking at the world, how I started looking at sin in my own life, and even in the world, it changed. There is a changed life. All, all things are become new. Old things have passed away. The old man is dead and buried with Jesus Christ. All things become new. He gives you a new life, and you look at everything differently. You look at everything through God's eyes. There's a changed life. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. The changed life. So if you're not saved, truly saved and born again, this study is not for you. 